G'day YouTubers. Last weekend was a perfect boating weekend. It wasn't so great for fishing, the moon was wrong, the tides weren't the way I liked them, but it was a perfect weekend for boating and I just wanted to be out on the water. Well I got down to the ramp when it was still dark, parked the boat in the darkest corner there was there because it was nice and out of the way to get it prepped for ready to go down the ramp. Done all my checks before I left home, I checked the uh, engine battery to make sure it had plenty of charge and I thought I'd check the house battery but when I got it in the water the engine started fine but I went to turn on the electrics and there was no power. So obviously somehow or other I've been distracted and missed checking that battery but no big deal. The engine was running, it had charged the batteries. All I had to do is change my plans and go trolling for a few hours instead of anchoring up and fishing and everything would be good again. Yeah well that wasn't the only mistake I made that morning. Parking in a dark corner and having two switches side by side to turn the batteries on, I'd reached in in the dark, felt around, grabbed the switch I thought was right and turned it on, however it was wrong. And what that meant was while the alternator was going, I had power for the house electrics, but the batteries weren't going to charge. And I didn't pick up on that at all. Oh, beautiful sunrise. And glassed out conditions to go with it. What a time to be on the water. That morning sunrise would have to have been one of the most spectacular I've seen in a good while. By this time I dropped the crab pots and I was setting up to go trolling so that I could charge the batteries. Well, let's do a swing around the uh, Cape Banks Beacon. If we don't pick up anything now, I'll head out past uh, Harry's. See how, we, see how we go out that way. Well, Harry's is certainly a car park already. Gotta watch this guy coming up behind me here. I'm going to cut across in front of him, uh, which will be fine if we're doing the same speed, but if he's going fast, I'm going to keep my eye on him. And just of note, we've got a couple of blokes fishing out here, which is well away from Harry's, and like I said, well worth having a look around to see what's nearby Harry's. I don't know whether they're on a good spot or not, but obviously they think they've got a chance or they wouldn't be there. If you can see this, I've got the deep board on this port rod and the shallow board on the starboard rod. And you can see the... Oh, I don't know if you can see it in this light. The lines are almost crossed, but they're not going to tangle because the deep board is in short. About 15 to 20 metres behind the boat and the shallow boards about 30 metres behind the boat. Got the first one. What is he? Benito. Oh, he's bait. Let's drop you out there before I get this back before it. It's all tangled, which is close to doing now. Uh, we've got a couple of bus stops just up ahead of us. I was going to try casting a slug into it, but they've disappeared. It's a bit of a risk with the trolling lines out, but I was figuring them for Benito. Should have been, I hope, easy enough to handle, keep them away from the other lines. Never mind, keep my eye out, we might get another opportunity. If not, there's always tomorrow. Now I've got something on this one. Something little, maybe a grinner. Oh, I don't know, it might be heavier than the grinner, I think. If you're the grinner, he's a big grinner. But if he's a mackerel, he's too small to keep. Uh, Bloody grinner. Okay, well that, that one's too far back to do any good. I'll have to bring him in a bit. I got something on this one again. Of course the board went down on me, making it hard to wind in. Another grinner probably. Looks like it. 
Yep, another grinner. No, oh, more bait. Just a bait gathering expedition today. Oop, got both of them up now. Don't tell me another bloody grinner. Shit, that's the grinner central here. This one will be another bloody grinner for sure. Another bloody grinner. Oh no, holy shit, got a little flathead. <laughs> See, did not expect that. I expect he'll be too small. What is it? Oh, 32. Go back over. And away. Oh, I've got something on the other one. I'll just look at it before I put that one back down. This is not a, not a little flathead. Huh. Look at that, another baby. Same species. There you go. Whoa. Turn to view off. About this time I started to get concerned about why the battery wasn't charging as much as it should have. I started calculating out the number of amps that the various things that I had turned on were drawing. I had the two sounders on, the autopilot, etc. I had turned the navigation lights off by now, of course. I couldn't figure it out. I thought, well, maybe I've got some sort of short somewhere. I went around peeling everything, make sure it wasn't hot. I didn't stop to consider that it might have been something I'd done, though. Not at this point, anyway. I turned off everything I could, including one of the sounders, thinking that with less draw on the batteries, it would charge a bit quicker, and then I just continued on. So I tried to do this on the boat, but my hat camera wasn't pointed in the right direction. I didn't get it in the frame properly, so I'll do this here just to show you. These are head start rigs for trolling ballyhoo, and that's the American name for our garfish. The cockatoos decided it was time to announce their presence, so I'm just going to voice over this a little bit. And all I said was that Mr. Bait is now distributing these and he has a heap of them in his shop. I saw them up on the wall and decided they'd be worth a go. As you'll see later when I troll it, because I'm doing this after the event, uh, it's a pretty good system, I really like it. And it would seem that it's going to give a good hookup. I had initially bought it to go trolling for some Spanish mackerel. But I haven't been able to get up north of Cape Morton yet, so I gave them a test run north of Peel the other day when I was out, and that's the video I'm going to roll after this bit. But I'll just show you how you rig them now. You need a needle, because this hook and chain goes up through the middle of the fish. Turn him over and feed it in through the anal cavity, and up through the centre of the fish, there we go, we're aiming to come out the mouth, just there, through the centre of the mouth. Feed the whole thing right the way through. And that's what we're aiming for, to have that hook sit like that. So when the fish comes and grabs it, you can't miss that hook. Then we put the head on him. He unclips like so and pulls out like that. The chain here goes through, through that hole there. Okay, and we run this back 
You can poke his eyes out first if you want to, but the idea is this pin goes through the eye socket, all the way through and out the other side. If you're a bit squeamish about it, just poke his eyes out first. Make sure your chain's not too loose in there. You might just pull that through just to another, another ball or two. That's better. And then this thing, put the chain through the front and that slides in there and back. So you put the pin through that hole again that clips in. And that's it. You just attach that ring to your fishing line and make sure your fish is nice and flexible. And as you'll see in the video when I run it, he has a nice swim motion through the water. And having this head on him protects it. I'm going to give them a go as soon as I can get out there after some fish to the north end of Morton. But I think I might just about miss the Spanish mackerel season this year. However, I've got them ready for next year. And who knows, I might get something else on them anyway once I get up there and try them. And that's it. When you are finished, hopefully you won't have the bait there and you'll have something a lot bigger on the end of that hook. But just unclip that, pull it apart, and he comes back out again like that. That's it. Done. Nothing to it. It's a great little uh, setup, I think. Comes with all instructions on how to use it and some tips on how to troll it. Basically, pretty much the same as you troll any trolling board behind the boat at about the same sort of speed. But if you go over and see Frank to buy one, just ask me about it. He'll tell you all you need to know. Right, Let's see how it goes. The instructions say to run it. Oh, yeah, it's gonna. Oh, that's going to trail really nicely. Instructions say to run it like you would the uh, planer board. So that's what I'm going to do. Not as much drag on the rod. Well, as an experiment, that is looking like a swimming fish to me. Let's see if I can get up here a little bit closer. And uh, it's going to be hard for hard to see in the video for the frame there. Oh, there we go. Oh, maybe. Yeah, all that foam. There we go. See the got a little tail flap going on it? That looks really good. And that head piece is going to protect the uh, head of the fish. The bait's holding up really well. Better than any dead bait I've ever tried to troll before. Not that I've done a lot of trolling dead baits. Alright, I'll see if they're getting this apart. Well, I can go in for someone's dinner. Throwing down a bit, pull this in. And I'll go and sit around near the crab pots because that is not charging up enough for me to want to stay out overnight. Been running around on it for about five hours now, so if she's not got enough charge on it now, I'm not thinking she's ever going to get enough, so take it home, charge it up on the battery charger, and make sure I check the bloody thing before I come out next time. God, that's annoying. So annoying. Weekend ruined because I didn't check the bloody battery. I'm so sure I did check it too. I went down to check it a few days ago. I must have got sidetracked and then forgot all about it. How annoying. Oh, my wife will be pleased to see me home. Well, I didn't really want to pick the crab pots up until 12 o'clock, so I was just having a little bit of a play here with a lure, soft plastic lure. And I just got a hit on it. I wasn't really expecting anything. I was just playing around. It was shocking my life and I got a hit on it. And of course, didn't hook up on it. So now I'm gonna have to get a little bit serious. Oh, I got, I think I got something. Oh, I let go. Oh no, he hadn't. Oh yes, he did. He took the tails off. Bam. Okay, perhaps that lure's a bit big. I'll throw it in again on the basis that the tails aren't there, he might take the might take the body. If I don't do any good on this one, I'll grab another lure, a smaller one. I'm leaving the engine run because the battery's in such bad condition. 
uh, the house battery anyway. I uh, want the house battery because it runs the sounders and things, so don't really want to go without it if I don't have to. Now to do this little bit of fishing, while I was waiting to pull up the crab pots, I dropped the encoder down to keep me in the one spot rather than anchor up. It wasn't long after this shot that the house battery failed completely. There wasn't enough power left to run the sounders or the chart plotter. Even then I didn't realise exactly what was wrong, although with hindsight it was perfectly obvious that I had made a mistake earlier in the day. It wasn't until I'd got back to the ramp and washed the boat down and everything, the last thing I do before I drive off from the ramp is turn all the batteries off. It was at that point that I realised it was my mistake that had ruined my entire weekend. And I can tell you right now that that didn't make me any happier at all. And what was it that I did to ruin my entire weekend, you might ask? Well, the setup I've got in the boat is I have three switches. One switch controls the engine and house batteries, turn that on, they're all connected. Another switch links the Mincator batteries into the charging system so that they can be charged from the motor alternator. And a third switch connects all the batteries together so that they can be charged from a battery charger connected to the 240 volt system while I'm at home. I pulled up in the darkest corner of the ramp to prepare the boat in the morning and I just reached under the seat and flipped two of the switches on without looking. I felt around, I thought I had the right switches, but what I'd done is I turned the house and starter batteries on, but instead of turning the Mincator batteries on so that they charge, I flipped the other switch so that all the batteries were connected together for charging from the 240 volt charger at home. And what they did by connecting the batteries together was to prevent the house battery from being charged from the engine. And when I deployed the Mincota to do that fishing right at the end, because the house batteries were connected to the Mincota batteries, the Mincota just drained the house battery entirely so that I had no GPS or sounder to go home with. Not that it mattered, I was within sight of the ramp, but it could have been a lot more stressful had I been offshore when that happened. How's that? I got baited on a soft plastic lure. <laughs> oh, I would not have expected that. Well, I didn't expect that. <laughs> got a lot to learn about lure fishing. I didn't even see a bite on that, but I wasn't watching the whole time. I was stuffing my face with a lovely sandwich my wife prepared for me, but I certainly didn't expect that a fish would just take the bait like that on a not on a soft plastic i mean surely he gets it in his mouth and says this isn't real food some of you will sit back and say a oh, silly fellow you deserve that for being so stupid as to turn on the wrong switch but i can tell you from a lifetime of experience that this is how accidents happen as a pilot i used to get the air safety magazine that went through all the accidents in australia and some around the world explaining what led up to them You'd be surprised just how many of them started with some little thing that the pilot just didn't realise he'd done wrong and one bad mistake leads to another leads to another and all of a sudden an aircraft is lost. I've been going out in this particular boat for nearly two years now and I'd never had an electrical problem on board. I should have thought what have I done differently this time but I'd started off behind the eight ball by making a mistake at home which led to a discharged house battery when I got to the ramp and I didn't think past that. I thought all my trouble stemmed from that and I didn't look any further. And that's a classic definition of an accident. I know how these things happen, I know what to avoid and I still fell into the trap. Hopefully I've learnt and I won't do the same thing next time. Unfortunately, I also know that knowing what causes an accident doesn't always prevent that accident from happening. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it. If nothing else, it might help you next time you're out in the water and things start to go wrong. You might think about things a little bit differently and hopefully sort out your problem without it getting any worse. As for my trip, it wasn't a total loss. I took home a few crabs and I got to try out my new trolling system very happy with that and can't wait to get out there and try it out in earnest. If you'd like to see some more of my videos go to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that like button, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, good fishing.